In this lesson, we shall focus on the Gauteng Province Preparatory Examination of 2023 Mathematics Paper 1. It was written in three hours out of 150 marks. It is Mathematics Paper 1 written in September last year. And we're getting started and we're going to solve the questions together. Right, in the first question in the Gauteng province, um, question one, 1.1.1, 1 .1 .1, 1, the learners were asked to solve the first question. They were asked to solve 2x plus one, all squared minus four equals zero. What do we do here? Anyone? What do we do here? What is the first step? Um, sir. Yeah, anyone. Either parallel or nombuso. Doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, it's nombuso, say. Okay, so that's fine. Okay. Yep. Um, we are going to to expand um the um, the two x plus one. If you expand it, what do we get? Okay, we are going to make it two because it's squared. Yeah, okay, um, because it's squared, we can we can write two. Two pair, uh, a pair of brackets like this and another pair of brackets like this. And then minus four equals zero, right? Yes. And then, and then we use the FOIL method. Right, we multiply two x and this, you multiply x and that, you multiply this with that, you multiply this with that. So if you multiply two x and two x, what do we get? We get exactly four x squared. Good, two x times one, we get two x. Then one times two x, we get two x. And then one times one, we get a one and we subtract, subtract four and we get zero. And from this, we get 4x squared. 2x plus 2x gives us exactly 4x. 1 minus 4 gives us minus 3 equals 0. Right. And at this point, uh, we're able to see the factors. What are the factors of this? So what are the factors of 4x squared plus 4x minus 3 equals 0? What are the factors? Um, it's not two and one. Mm, two and two. Mm -hmm. Yes, two and two, yeah. Okay, so in other words, we have four x squared plus four x minus three equals zero. Mm -hmm. Then right now, we need to get the factors of this. Okay, now to easily get the factors in a situation like this, you multiply, you multiply 4x squared times minus 3. Right, so when you multiply 4x squared times minus 3, what do we get? We get exactly minus 12x squared. And at this point, when you get minus 12x squared, you look for the factors of minus 12 which when added together will give 4x. Factors of minus 12, x squared, which when added together will give four. And those factors will be six x together with minus two x because six x times minus two x will give us minus 12 x squared. Yet six x minus two x will give us what? Plus four x. And therefore, we're going to write here 4x squared plus 6x minus 2x minus 3 equals what? Zero. And we pull out the highest common factor, something called the highest common factor, the HCF. HCF. Right. And then here we're going to pull out the highest common factor. The highest common factor of 4 and 6 is what? It's a 2x. Right, and then now if we have this, we have also here another 2x. Then here you're gonna have a three. If you pull out, okay, if you pull out the, the, the highest common factor two, 
then you say six divided by two, you get a three. Okay, obviously the X has been pulled out. You factor out the negative and you have two X plus three. Okay, you need to repeat and repeat this method. It's not very popular, but it's the best way to factorize. So you have two X plus three is, is here. So because the two X plus three, you pull it out, then if factor it out is a common factor, you are left with two X minus one equals zero. Right, and at this point, uh, when you get to this, uh, you can see that X is minus three out of two, or X equals what? One out of two. And therefore, this becomes the answer to this. Any question? Any question? Yes, please. Mina, I did it with a... Um... Quadratic. Quadratic. Yes. yes, you can use the quadratic formula. It's okay. Any method, as long as you get the same answer. Mm -hmm. The quadratic, the quadratic what? Formula. What is the quadratic formula? X equals minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC out of what? Out of 2A. Right, so that, that is what we're getting exactly. So next, we actually gonna do the thing. But you see, this one can also be done differently. I mean, another kid can come here and say, I can see that it is two, it is this squared, I can move the four to the other side. Then the kid can realize that, okay, at this point, uh, you have a two X plus one, you square the four, And then we have plus or minus the square root of four, and then the square root. We have now, then you take the square root both sides. The square root of four is plus or minus two, and then we have two x plus one. Then the kid can come and say, okay, two x plus one is two. Or you can say that two x plus one is a minus two. Okay, so yeah, you can have that. Two x plus one is two, or you can say that 2x plus 1 is what? Is minus 2. And then this means that 2x is 2 minus 1 is a 1. 2x is minus 2 minus 1 is a minus 3. You divide by 2, which is 1 half, or you divide by 2, which is minus 3 over 2. Okay, we got 1 half and minus 3 over 2. And here we also got 1 half or minus 3 over 2. So in other words, both methods work correctly. Both methods work correctly. So now we look at the next question. This one here. We need to solve 4x squared minus 11 is equal to that. So this is that plus 12x minus 11 equals 0. And at this point, then to use it, because once they say correct to two decimal places, you just need to use the quadratic formula. So you have minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over what? 2A. The A is 4. The B is 12. The C is minus 11. So you're going to say minus B, which is minus 12 plus or minus the square root of the b squared. The b squared is actually exactly 12 squared minus 4a. a is what? a is 4, right? And then c is minus 11, all divided by what? By twice a and a is 4. And this is minus 12 plus or minus. Okay, so you're gonna do, we're gonna use our calculator to do this one. We're going to use our calculator to do this. So now what we're going to have here, we have 12. 12 squared minus 4 times, 4 times minus 11. You close the bracket and the, what is the answer here? Then we have exactly 300 and what? We have exactly 320 under the square root. So in other words, so you'd have exactly 320 under the square root. So you have the square root of here of 320. You divide everything by two times four, which is what? 
which is exactly eight. So that we have minus 12 plus the square root of 320 divided by eight, or x equals uh, minus 12 minus the square root of 320 divided by eight. So that now you continue to use the calculator. By using the calculator, you actually are able to obtain the following. So you can do this and, and punch minus 12 plus the square root of 320 divided by eight. Right, and therefore what we're getting here is that answer, which is uh, 0 0.74, 0 0.74. Right, so here you have x is approximately 0, 0,74, but obviously they set to two decimal places, so 0 0.74 or x is approximately, so you're going to do this one here. So that now you come here. So that in the end, this one is minus 3.74, minus 3.74. So we also have the minus 3,74. And that becomes the answer to the 11 point what? To the 1.1.2 question. Okay, I'm no, I know that the quadratic formula is known very, very well. Where's the question about this one? No question. We move on to the next question. Okay, please try 1.1.3. Right, 1.1.3 is 15x minus four is less than nine x squared. Please try this question. Let me know when you're done, and then we shall do the corrections together. Try 15x minus 4 is less than 9x squared. Try it there in your book. I'm giving you like two minutes. And then please, when you're done, let me know. When you're done, let me know. When you're done, let me know. Right, when you're done, let me know. When you're done, let me know. How far? Okay, now this one, you need to write it in what you call the standard, in standard form. So you have nine X squared plus 15 X minus four is less than zero. You bring the nine X squared to the other side. And then the next thing is because the nine x squared is a, is has a negative, you'll have to multiply the left by negative one. Right, so you have this here, minus four, but now you need to also multiply by negative one, the zero. The inequality will change direction. When you multiply by a negative number both sides, the inequality changes what? Direction. Okay, and at this point, uh, you have what? You have negative times negative, which is positive. 9x squared minus 15x plus 4 is bigger than negative 1 times 0 is actually exactly a 0. So what are the factors of this? So to get the factors, you take the 9x squared, you multiply it by 4. Right, so if you have this one, you multiply it by 4. What you're getting here is actually exactly 36x squared, right? And upon therefore careful examination, what we have is then the following. Yeah. Oh. Yes, please. Yeah. What do you think? 
No, I'm saying I'm done. And what answer yeah. did you get? What answer did you get? I got four over three and one over three. Four over three, one over three. What are the inequalities here? Is it less than? Is X less than or greater than? Um it's le okay. So I said one over three is less than X and um four over three is um is is greater than four over three. Okay, let's uh, let's write your answer well because we're just gonna compare now with the answer we're gonna get. And we're coming to you, please, Perelelo, as well. We are coming to you, Perelelo. Right, you said, what is the thing? I need to write down exactly what you're saying. Okay. I said one over three. One over three. Is greater than or equals to X, sorry. Greater than or equal yes. to X, like this, okay? It is greater than, it's less than, I'm sorry. Oh, it's less than, okay? So it's less than X. Yeah. Like this, yeah? And then? Yes. And then did you say now the four over three? Or, or equal. Is it less than or equal to four over three? Four over three is... Yes. Okay. Is 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 it like this or even on one over three? Even here there's something like this. Yes. Okay, that's fine. Remember, we're practicing. We're practicing. Okay, good things. Um, so you need to factorize this and you want to check if your answer is correct. So we need to obviously look at this. And once again, this lesson is recorded. Even if your network is bad, but you're gonna get the recording at the end of the day. So now we multiply to factorize this easily. You multiply the nine x squared, the quadratic term, by the four. Then you get thirty-six. In a careful examination, you look for two numbers, the factors of thirty-six, that give minus fifteen. Right, there are two numbers which, when you multiply, you get thirty-six, but when you add them up, get exactly what you get exactly fifteen. Right, now the question becomes, you get minus 15, what are those numbers? So obviously you need to sit down and think, but now think very, very carefully. Right, what are the factors of 36, which when added together will give minus 15? Right, so um, you need to think, but think very, very carefully and reason. So now you need to work out the factors of 36. For instance, you would see that the factors of 36 would be four and nine, but four and nine, when you add them up, they do not give minus 15, right? And then now you can actually be in a position to break these, to separate these, for instance, and then you can look at, uh, at three times 12, right? Three times 12. So you can see that, okay, if you take minus 3x and minus 12x, okay, minus 3 times minus 12 will give you 36. Uh, obviously, with the mm. minus 3x, minus 12x will give you exactly 36x squared. But when you add them up, you get minus 15. So that at this point, you have exactly 9x squared minus 12x minus 3x plus 4 is bigger than 0, right? So, so now if you think these are the uh, numbers, then you take the highest common factor of the 9x squared and the minus 12, and you get a 3x. And then here you'd get exactly a, a 3x minus, and then we have a 4 here, right? And then here you pull out a negative, you have 3x minus 4 is bigger than 0 which means therefore that at this point you take the highest common factor. So you cross this out and then we have three X minus four 
and then 3x minus 1 is bigger than is bigger than 0. So these become the factors. Right. So now upon careful examination, what you need to do, you need to draw a rough sketch. Um, so you need to find what you call the critical. You need to find critical values. What are the critical values? The x equals, uh, you put equal signs, you put 4 over 3 x equals 1 over 3. So now you have the minimum vertex like this. And then you have 1 over 3 and you have 4 over 3. Like that. Okay, this graph is going to have a minimum vertex because uh, the coefficient of the quadratic term is positive. And therefore now you need to read off the answer. And to read off the answer from this here, you need to note the four that we're looking for where the quadratic is positive. And uh, the quadratic is positive where? The quadratic is positive exactly there, and the quadratic is positive above. Right, and therefore, it means that your x is going to be less than 1 over 3. Your x is going to be bigger than what? Or x is going to be bigger than 3 because we're going to look at this arm when it's bigger than 4 thirds, or x is less than 1 third. Okay, so this is the answer to the question. Where's the question? So say yes. Mine is the okay. Mine is wrong. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. You see, what you need to look at is that when it, when the inequality is 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 strict, it's a strict inequality, like it's less than. So obviously, mm -hmm. here we need to remove anything, so we can't we can't make it equal to, you know. If mm -hmm. it's like here, yeah, it's it's less than only, so we can only deal. So we can't make it like this. We can't make it like this if it is only this. Then we can't make it this. Because it's only, only that. So it's only less than, so we can't make it less than or equal to. You get the point? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, so that's it. Yeah? Um, you said, okay, you said X, greater than one over three or x yeah so i'm confused on or yes or the or is because uh, it separate the, the these uh, you are looking for where the inequality is greater than zero greater than zero means the quadratic is greater than zero if it's greater than zero then we are looking at greater than zero means above the x-axis this is the x-axis and therefore we are saying above the x-axis and therefore, we're going to take this uh, this solution here where it is above. We're going to take this solution here also where, when it is what? When it is above. And therefore, it means that we shall have here our x less than. Why is x less than uh, 1 over 3? It, x is less than 1 over 3 because we actually, this graph is actually going higher and higher when um, we are moving um, towards less than um, the one third. But also when we are moving towards the greater than, so x is bigger than four thirds when we are moving uh, upward like that. Hmm. So what if, say, you treat your graph even like this? Right, yeah. So obviously at this point, uh, we made the graph like that because uh, it was it's, it's because of this. Because of the fact that the nine is what? The nine is positive. The nine is what? It's positive. You see, because the nine is positive, then it, it is gonna have a, um, it, it, it has a minimum vertex, right? It has a minimum vertex, and therefore it will pretty much be this. Um, obviously it can only be this way when um, you have uh, a negative coefficient here, but for us to factorize with ease, with simplicity, um, then we must uh, make sure that the coefficient of the quadratic term is positive whenever we're writing the equation in what? In standard form. What is the standard form? The standard form is ax squared plus bx plus what? Plus c. This is called the standard form of a quadratic equation. And obviously this is going to be the standard form of a quadratic expression. Any question? Okay, so try to think about this. Try to think about this. Okay. 
Peralelo, Peralelo, any question? No, sir. Okay, we move on. Okay, the next one is 1.1.4. Okay, in, ca in case you get disconnected, please join again because you might get disconnected. If you get disconnected, please join again. Okay, this one, how do we solve this one? Peralelo. Right, we need your input. How do we solve this one here? How? So are we gonna look for the common factor? Okay, that's fine. But talking about 1.1.4, where we have the square root of 2x minus 2 minus the square root of 7 minus 2x equals 1. Oh, oh we're going we're gonna to remove the square roots first. How are we going to remove it? By um, squaring them. By squaring both sides. By right? Yes. Good. Right, so we square both sides, and this one you know very well. Now, to score both sides, the first thing first, that is correct. So, well done for getting that one right. So, we're going to have one square root, and then if there are two square roots like this, uh, we need to move... Uh, we need to move one square root to the other side of the equation. So we're going to take uh, the square root of the of 7 minus 2x to the other side, and then you add a 1, like that. So that then in the end, you have 2x minus 2, and then we square the left, and then we have the square root of 7 minus 2x plus one, and then you square like this. Okay, obviously you square both sides. If you square both sides, then it becomes exactly two X minus two is equal to, now if you square this one, you square the square root, it becomes seven minus two X. And then you have this times this times two, which is two times the square root of seven minus two X. You square the one, you get a one like that. Right, and upon careful examination, we're gonna add all the terms out. Right, so we add all the terms out. You would have the 2x, the 2x, and then we add this 2x. So it's going to be exactly what? 4x. Then we collect like terms right now because now we know that 7 plus 1 is 8. Minus 2 minus 8 is going to give us exactly what? Minus 10. And this is equal to 2 times the square root of 7 minus 2x. We square both sides. Now we have 4x minus 10, we square the left, but before perhaps we square, what we can do is we can divide right through by 2 to simplify this. So we have 4x divided by 2, you have 10 divided by 2, you have 7 minus 2x divided by 2. And then we have 4x divided by 2, you get 2x minus 5. And this is exactly 7 minus 2x. And when you get to this point, uh, we actually have been able to write it like this. And uh, we have the 2x minus 5. We square the left, 7 minus 2x. And we square this. So that now when you square this, it becomes exactly 4x squared. Now the 2x times minus 5 times minus 2, 2x times minus 5 is minus 10, times minus 2 is actually minus 20x. You square the negative 5, uh, you get actually a 25. You square the square root, it becomes 7 minus 2x. You collect like terms, and this becomes so uh, exactly 4x squared. You have minus 20x plus 2x, which is actually minus 18x. And then we have 25 minus 7, you have plus 18 equals 0. Like that. So that then in the end, uh, you actually need to simplify this. To simplify this, you divide right through by 2. And divide 4 by 2, you get actually exactly um, 2x squared. You divide the nine, the minus 18 by 2, you get 9x, and you get plus 9 equals 0. Now, when you get to this point, uh, you need to factorize this. So if you have exactly 2x squared minus 9x plus 9 equals 0, how do we factorize this? Now, to factorize this here, you multiply 2x squared by 9. And if you multiply 2x squared by 9, what do you get? So you take 2x squared, you multiply it by positive 9. 
And if you do that, you get exactly 18 x squared. You look for the factors of 18 x squared, which when added together will give a minus nine. What are the factors of 18, which will give exactly minus nine when added together? Right, so you need to think of this. And those factors are minus six x together with minus three x. Right, because minus six x times uh, minus three x will give us minus, uh, minus uh, will give us plus 18 x squared. Yet, if you add minus six and minus three, you get actually a minus nine. So that here you get two uh, x squared, you have a minus six x, you have minus three x, so you add a nine, you get a zero. Pull out the two x like this, you have exactly the x minus three, minus three, then you have x minus three equals zero. And upon careful examination, you actually will need to take out the, the highest common factor. So this one you cancel out and then it is x minus three, which is two x minus three equals zero. In a poor careful examination, what are you able to get out of this? Um, you're able to see that um, x is equal to three x is equal to three out of these, or x is equal to three out of two, right? So you get these particular solutions. And then right now you need to check the solutions and, re and realize if you test, this one is not applicable and this one is applicable. How do you know this one is applicable? It's not applicable. It is not applicable because when you put it here in the place of the x, you're going to have a, actually um, a problem. What problem are you going to have if you put it here, for example? In the place of the x, you substitute, you put a 3 over 2, 2 cancels, it gives you 3 minus 2, which is a 1. And then, so you get a 1 on this side. You get a 1 on this side. When you put the 3 over 2 here, the 2 cancels, giving you 7 minus 3, and 7 minus 3 is a 4. And then um, the square root of 4 is what? The square root of four is actually exactly two. Two plus one gives you a three. And what you're getting um, is that uh, one is equal to three, but one is not equal to three. And therefore the X is actually, this X equal to three over two is uh, not applicable. And uh, in other words, uh, what you then say in the exam is therefore that you reject, right? So you reject, what you reject? You reject uh, uh, this solution, or you can say, you can then say that x is not equal to, x is not equal to that. You can say that x is not equal to three out of two. You can say x is not equal to three out of two. Any question? Say. Yes. Can you please repeat for me um, this one, yeah, two square root of seven minus two x. Um, let me see, you, you're saying the two square root of seven minus two x. Yes. Um, this one, two the square root of seven minus two x. Okay, that's fine. Okay, uh, here we collect like terms. So to collect like terms, please come again. Please can uh, the up one over there. This one. No. This one. Uh, next to it, to say. Uh, this one. Yes. Okay. Um. Right. Because. Uh, okay. Um. Remember that we're given the square root of two x minus two minus the square root of seven minus two x is equal to one, right? So what we did was we moved this one to the other side. So always when you're given two square roots in one equation, you, moved one, you move one square root to the other side so that you are left with one square root on one side of the equation. At this point, now you start squaring both sides and you square both sides and squaring uh, one square root on the left and are now squaring the right also. And when you square the left, you would have actually then two X minus two. And then on the right, you square the right. And when you square the right, you're gonna have exactly what? Right, when you square the right, you square this square root, you square this square root. And so when you square this square root, what do you get? You square this square root. So you get seven minus two X plus. 
Then you multiply these times these times two. And then it becomes two, the square root of seven minus two x. Then you square the one. Like that. Oh, you multiply. Same. Yes, yes, just multiply. You see, like, like, like oh. in the same in the same way that you square x plus y squared. How do you, what is the answer to x plus y all squared? Um, the answer is x squared plus um y squared. Okay, yeah, the answer is gonna be x squared plus two xy plus y squared all together. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Yes, yeah, so it's the same. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it's the same. So you square this uh, the square root. And then next, you okay to square a binomial like this with it, which is a two term expression, you square the x. Then next, you multiply x and y times two. x times y times two, you get two xy. Then you square the y, it becomes what? y squared. Are we together? So, in the same way here, when you are squaring, you will square first this one. And when you square the square root, the square root goes away and you're only left with seven minus two X. Then the next thing is it is these times, these times two, which is two, the square root of seven minus two X. And then you square the one, one squared is one. Then now you have the two X and then you also have minus two X. And now you, you collect like terms. Now this two X is negative two X, but when you bring it to the other side, it's gonna be positive two X. Or well, it's going to be plus 2x. And then now you have 2x plus 2x. What is 2x plus 2x? It's a 4x. Then now you have here the 7 plus 1, which is 8. The 8, when you bring it to the other side, is going to be negative 8. Now you have minus 2 minus 8. What is minus 2 minus 8? It's minus 10. And then now we can see here there is a 2 here. And so we can just divide both left and right by 2 because we can see 2 goes into 4, 2 goes into 10. So you can divide by 2. And you divide by 2, you have 2x divided by 2, uh, 4x divided by 2, you get 2x. And then you have minus 10 divided by 2, you have a minus 5. And then you divide uh, the 2 by 2, which is a 1. And then now you have the 2x minus 5 is equal to the square root of this. Now you still we have one square root left. And then you square both sides to remove the square root that is left. And then you have 7 minus 2x. 4x squared minus 20x plus 25. And then we have 4x squared minus 18x plus 18 equals 0. And then now you can divide through by 2 here. Because 2 goes into 4, 2 goes into minus 18, 2 goes into 18, and you get this. And then now you just need to factorize this. The 2x squared minus 9, x plus 9. You just need to factorize and get x equals 3, or x equals to 3 over 2. So that is the answer. We move on, right? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, good. Let's move on. Okay, if, if you get confused, please ask, because we're just revising the paper of last year. Okay, now the, the kids of last year, when we wrote the preparatory paper of September last year, they had to solve the following equations simultaneously. So now they, they gave them these simultaneous equations. So the question is that what are these simultaneous equations and therefore um, what are the answers to this what? To these simultaneous equations. Now, obviously, a couple of things that you need to take into account here. Because now when you're given these simultaneous equations, you're given the log. You're given the log base 2 of a plus 5 is equal to what? It's equal to 3. So you can take this one like this, which means a plus 5 is 2 to the power 3. What is 2 to the power 3? It's 8. Then you have a plus 5. And therefore, now you have 8 minus 5. 8 minus 5 is equal to 3. So you got already one of the solutions. Because you need to solve this equation simultaneously, then you have the other equation now. Now you're gonna come here and then say the a squared b squared. a squared b squared minus two a b minus eight equals zero. So that the a is three squared, then you have b squared minus two. Right, so you have minus two, the a is three, the b minus eight equals zero. 
So right now you square the three, you, you have a nine B squared minus six B minus eight equals zero. Right, so you have this particular equation. So what equation have we got? Right, now you have exactly nine B squared minus six B minus eight equals zero. Then you need to factorize this. What are the factors of this? Right, to get the factors of this, you need to multiply minus nine, or nine by minus eight. And uh, if you do it, you multiply the nine B squared, you multiply it by minus eight. And this is minus 72 B squared. Minus 72 B squared. Okay, if you have minus 72 B squared, what are you gonna do now? You look for the factors of minus 72, which when added together, will actually give, for instance, a minus six, right? So you maneuver the factors and uh, such that uh, you're able to get a minus six. And so what are those factors, right? One way to get the factors with so much ease, you know the factors of the nine, B squared, uh, there are three B together with three B. The factors of minus eight, uh, there are four and two or two and four. Right, so now, or you can use also one and eight. Right, so at this point, now you multiply. And for instance, if you check your three times, your three times two, it's what? Your three times two is a six. And then here, your three times uh, minus four is a minus 12. Minus 12 with six B. Right, and therefore, if you add this one, so, still the minus 12b and the 6b they give you minus 72 yet when you add them up the minus 12b and the 6b they give us minus 6 so that in this case uh, then you have uh, this one you have minus 12b plus 6b minus 8 equals 0 right and then you take the highest common factor of the 9 and the 12 and uh, you'll get that it's what it's exactly 3b and then uh, you have 3b minus 4 and then here you pull out the highest common factor, which is three. And if you pull out the highest common factor, which is two, excuse, right? So you pull out the highest common factor, which is two out of this. And if you pull out the highest common factor, which is exactly two, then we have exactly three B, um, three B minus four equals zero. And then now at this point, uh, you can see that the three B minus four is common, is the highest common factor. So you pull out 3b minus 4, and then you are left with 3b plus 2. This equals 0, which means that b is 4 out of 3. Or you have that b is uh, minus 2 out of what? Minus 2 out of 3. So that is uh, the answer to the question. So take a look at this, at this very carefully. And therefore, this is the solution. Where's the question here so far? Where's the question here so far? Any question? So the solutions are A equals three, and then here you have exactly B equals four thirds, B equals minus two out of three, like that. All right, any question? Where's the question? Okay, in the absence of a question, we move to the next one. We move to the next question. So please, sir, you need to pay attention and follow. Okay, if you look at 1.3, in 1.3 now, you are saying you need to deal with this. If P is equal to, if P is equal to the square root of X plus two, divided by, the square root of 16 minus x squared. If p is this one, for which values of x will p be real? For which values of x will p be real? So now at this point, uh, try this one, please. So for four marks, let me know when you're done. I'm giving you like two minutes. Pehalelo and Nombuso, please uh, try 1.3. For which values of x will p be real? Okay, try it. Try it. Right. 
please try it. Right. Let me know when you're done. Please let me know when you're done. Let me know when you're done. Please let me know when you're done. Please let me know when you're done. Hey, Carlero, how far are you? Um, a bit far, but I'm getting there. Okay. Nombuso, how far are you? Um, almost done. Okay. Okay, right. For the sake of progress, because we do not have the whole day, what you need to take note of is that obviously we just have two hours online. So we're going to take the x plus 2 in this expression. We take the numerator. The numerator must be greater or equal to 0 because we have a square root. So if you have a square root, you need to make sure that whatever is under the square root is greater or equal to 0. But simultaneously, then whatever you're going to have is the fact that the denominator itself, which is uh, 16 minus x squared, it must be what? 16 minus x squared must be, must be greater than zero. Right, so that is what you need to have. So you must have this, and then you put end like this. The 16 minus x squared must be greater than zero. Okay, so that then in the end, we have x is greater equal to minus two, and so this one, now you need to uh, find the factors of this. What are the factors of this? Right, the factors of this are 4 minus x together with what? Together with 4 plus x, this is bigger than bigger than 0. Because this one is, uh, is quadratic, you need to find the critical values. The critical values are x equals 4, x equals minus 4. So that then in the end, what you're able to get out of these, this one is quadratic. So because so uh, the x squared has a negative coefficient, it's going to have a maximum vertex like this. And uh, you're therefore going to put the minus 4 here with the 4. And uh, upon careful examination, when this is greater than zero, you would uh, realize therefore that uh, you actually would open like this, and uh, this goes up. So you're gonna consider the part where it is above. So it's all this part here um, that is above the x-axis, and therefore uh, from this we are able to see that uh, minus four is less than x less than four. Um, so this becomes a solution because it is when x lies between minus 4 and 4, um, x lies between minus 4 and 4, that is when you have that this graph itself is bigger than 0. And therefore, you have x. So you need to get the solutions now. This one, um, so you have uh, minus 4 together with 4. And then uh, you have minus 2. Minus 2x is greater or equal to minus 2. And then here, this one here. Okay, this one is a strict inequality. It's not equal to 0 because the denominator cannot be equal to 0. 
we do not divide by zero. Division by zero is undefined. So make sure that for this to be the square root, anything under the square root, under the square root must be bigger than zero. So, but here we're saying it's strictly, it is strictly bigger than zero. Why? Because we can't say greater or equal to zero. Why? Because we don't want to divide by zero. And then in the numerator, the numerator can be zero. So that the x plus two is greater or equal to zero. So that then in the end, then we have minus four to four. Right, so now you're gonna have the minus four to four. Right, so you have exactly minus four to what? To four like this. So when then do we have uh, an overlap because there's an end here? This end means we need to look for where these things overlap. So these uh, particular two lines, they overlap here. So which means that in the end, uh, our solution is gonna lie between these two. And uh, it means that our minus two is less or equal to X is less than four. Minus two is less or equal to X is less than four. Minus two is less or equal to X is less than four. So that is the answer to this question. Right, that is the answer to this question. Right, where's the question? Any question? So in other words, for which values of X will P be real? Real means that avoid a denominator from being zero. So you need to take the 16 minus x squared and make it strictly bigger than zero, but also simultaneously the x plus two must be greater or equal to zero. Why? Because we have a square root. The things under the square root must always be greater or equal to zero. We're taking the square roots of things that are greater than zero of numbers that are positive. Where's the question? Right, in the absence of a question, we'll move on to the next problem. Okay, this is this lesson is recorded for control and quality purposes. You'll receive the recording at the end of this lesson. Okay, you will receive the recording at the end of this lesson and then you can watch again and then try these questions again. We move on. Okay, the next one that they gave to the kids in the in the preparatory of 2023 last year was the following sequence is an arithmetic sequence. Calculate the value of P. So they gave the, the sequence one minus P and then they gave two P minus three and then they gave P plus five. And they said this sequence is what is an arithmetic sequence. It is what an arithmetic sequence. Calculate the value of P. What do we do here, Nombuso? What do we do here, Nombuso? Uh Say um we calculate for up. Yes, we need to calculate uh, use, the value of p. Yeah. Using how? how? Um, using um arithmetic formula. Yes. So we know that t two minus t one must be t three minus what minus t two. What is t two? 2p minus 3. What is t1? 1 minus p. t3 is p plus 5 minus t2. t2 is 2p minus 3. And this is 2p minus 3. You, mu you multiply, which is minus 1 plus p. And then you have p plus 5. You distribute here is minus 2p plus 3. You collect like terms together. Right, which means you have 2p together with p, which is going to give us exactly 3p minus 3 minus 1 is a minus 4. p minus 2p is a minus p. 5 plus 3 is what? It's exactly 8. And then uh, you collect the like terms, getting exactly 3p plus p, which is equal to 8 plus 4. What is 3p plus p? It's actually exactly 4p. 8 plus 4 is what? It's 12. You divide by 4, both left and right, getting p is equal to 3. So P equals three, where's the question? Because we had to calculate the value of P and to calculate the value of P, we use T2 minus T1 equals T3 minus T2. Why? Because it is an arithmetic sequence. In the arithmetic sequences, we know that the common difference is always T2 minus T1, but also the common difference is actually T3 minus T2. And this is true for arithmetic sequences. Who does not understand what we've done here? Who is lost? Where's the question? Where's the question? 
Okay, they're asking the question here. Write down the value of the first term of the sequence. What is the first term of this sequence? What is the first term? We need the value of the first term. So the value of the first term of the sequence, it must be a number. What is the value of the first term of the sequence? Pejarelo. What is the value of the first term of this sequence? What is the value of the first term of this sequence? Pejarelo. Just give me a minute, sir. Okay. Because each time I'm giving a chance to think, I'm giving a chance to practice. So I want you to write down the value of the first term of the sequence. What is the sequence? The sequence is the one minus P, two P minus three and P plus five. But write down the value of the first term of the sequence. What is the value of the first term of this sequence? The value of the first term of this sequence. What is the value of the first term of this sequence? Um, say. Yes. It is negative two. It is negative two. How do you know? Okay. The thing that I did say, I, I, okay, I, I said, T1 is equal to 1. Um, T1. Hmm? Yeah. T1 Part is equal to 1, to one minus, minus P. Well done. Because 1 minus P is the first term. 1 minus P is yes. the first term. And therefore, but you know that P is what? P is what? P is yes. 3. And then 1 minus 3 is minus 2. 1 minus 3 is minus 2. So that it means that T1 is equal to minus 2. So the first term of the sequence is minus 2. The first term of the sequence is minus 2. What is the common difference? What is the common difference? Anyone? What is the common difference? Who knows? What is the common difference? What is the common difference? Parallelo, what is the common difference? You'll forgive me if I pick your name. I'm just interested in seeing, making you think a little bit, you know? I want you to practice a little bit and think. It's not that I'm just picking on you, but what is the common difference? Parallelo. What do you think the common difference is? What is the common difference? What is the common difference? Pejalelo. What is the common difference, Pejalelo? So can I try it? Yes, please. Um, it's uh, six. How do you know? Okay, say so I said um, one minus, then I substitute three. You substitute three? Um, that's, yeah. Yes. Then yeah, it right. gave me negative two. Yes. Then I go to the next one, which is 2P. 
instead yes. of he are substitute and minus three. Yes. Um, which gives me um which yeah, gives me three. Yes. And then the last one is p plus five. And then you know already that p is equal to three, isn't it? Yes. And then uh, three plus five is eight. It's eight. Right. And upon, yes. ke upon careful examination of that one, so you need to find the common difference. And so the common difference is d, which is t2 minus t1. And t2 is what? t2 is three. t1 is what? T1 is minus two. This one. Oh, it's, yes. It's, okay. It's yeah, so, yeah. What do you think? Okay, so T1 is minus two because one minus three, what is one minus three? It's minus two, isn't it? Yes. So now you have a, now if you put the P equals three here, you have the three and the eight. So T2 minus T1, T2 is three minus t1 t1 is actually minus uh, 2 so that uh, you have uh, minus three plus two because mm -hmm. negative times negative is what is positive so that three it's plus positive. two is a five right okay so now it appears that our d is equal to what is equal to five, five. meaning you can come here and say the common difference is is five you can come here and say the common difference is what? Is five. Okay. The common difference is five. Then, okay, we found the rest of these things, but let us continue. We found that the common difference is five, but uh, we found that the first term itself, um, you're able to get the first term because you, you got that P was three from the previous question. And then the first term is one minus P, which is one minus three, one minus three is what? Is minus two. Okay, so that then in the end, if you want to explain why none of the numbers in this arithmetic sequence are perfect numbers. So that then in the end, explain why none of the numbers in this arithmetic sequence are perfect numbers. Who knows why? Who knows why? I know this one is going to be tricky. Let us save time. So you're going to have 1 minus P, and then you have 2P minus 3, and then you have P plus 5, because some of you do not know perfect perfect squares. Excuse me. Okay, what is a perfect square? Do you remember what perfect squares are? I can, I can imagine that you remember perfect squares. So that here you will come, for instance, and use uh, 1 minus 3, and then you already know that P is three. So wherever there is P here, you put three, minus three. And then wherever there is P here, you put three plus, uh, plus five. And then we have one minus three, which is a minus two. Two times three, it's six minus three, which is a three. Three plus five is what? Three plus five is exactly um, eight, right? So you have exactly that. So now we have three plus five, which is exactly what? Eight. Right, and, and therefore, this, you already know the common difference. So you can actually be in a position to continue with this pattern. So now the common difference, it means the number you add to each one. So if you add five to minus two, it becomes five minus two, which gives the next one, which is three. And if you add five to three, you get eight. If you add five to eight, you, you get 13. You add five, you get what? You get 18 and you add five and so on and so forth. So now what we are able to immediately observe here is the fact that we can write to, uh, like in this block here, it is that all the terms, all the terms except, all the terms except T1, And in either in either three or eight, while perfect numbers 
or what you call perfect squares. And end in one, four, nine, six, five, zero. Okay, we can see that all the numbers except T1 end in either a three or eight. Three like this one ends in three or eight like the 18. While perfect squares end in one, you know, four, nine, six, five, zero. Before the perfect square would be like a, the number that ends in a five, it's a 25, which is five squared. So uh, obvious you can see that uh, this what happens, some end in one, like 81, which is actually the same as nine squared. Right, so all the terms except T1 end in either three or eight, while perfect squares end in one, four, nine, six, five, zero. Right, so that explain why none of the numbers in this arithmetic sequence are perfect squares. This is the explanation. This exactly is the explanation. Right, so all the terms except T1 end in either three or eight, while perfect squares end in one, four, um, six, five, um, and zero. Where's the question? Where's the question? Or equ equivalently, you can use the formula that says that Tn is a plus n minus one times the common difference. So that now you can take the first term. What is the first term? The first term is a minus three. So you put it here, plus n minus one, and then we have the common difference. What is the common difference? Right, so you find the common difference. We've seen that the common difference is five. And then you have Tn, so this is minus three plus five n minus five, which is exactly five n minus eight. 5n minus 8. So that then in the end, if this is exactly the case, um, you're able to see that this here is not, is not a perfect, is not a perfect square. It's actually not a perfect square. Um, all right, let me see. Okay, um, check here. The first term is minus two here, so you need to put a minus two there. So the first term is a minus two here, and then we have five n minus two minus five n minus seven. Minus seven. It's not a perfect square, this one. 5n minus 7 is not a perfect square. It's not a perfect square. So that we have to explain why none of the numbers in this arithmetic sequence are perfect squares. That's the reason, because the general term itself is not a perfect square. Where's the question here? Where's the question? And then we move on. We move on to the next question. Right, we move on to the next question. Okay, the next question is this one, 2.2. .2. The following sequence of numbers forms a quadratic sequence. The following sequence of numbers forms a quadratic sequence, minus three, minus two, minus three, minus six, minus 11. The first difference is of the above sequence also form a sequence, determine an expression for the general term of the first differences. Right? So now, in this case, you take minus three, minus two, minus three, minus six, minus 11. And then you do this. So if you have this one together with this one, you have exactly a one. 
This one together with this one, there's a minus one. This one together with this one is a minus three. This one together with this one is what? Is actually a minus five. And then you do this. And then this one minus this one is a minus two. This one minus this one is a minus two. This one minus this one is a minus two. So you are saying the first differences of the above sequence also form what? Um, a sequence. Determine expression for the general term of the first differences. Okay, this one here forms the first differences. Okay. Now these first differences, now when you are dealing with them, and explain for general term of the first difference is the first term. So when this is quadratic like this, it means that this one's form an arithmetic progression. So that the first term is A, and then the common difference becomes this one, which is minus two. And an expression for the general term is going to be for the arithmetic um, sequence. It's, it is A plus A minus one times the common difference D. The first term is one plus n minus one. The common difference is minus two. So that this is minus two n and this one is two plus one, which gives us what? Gives us a three, like that. So now if they're asking you here, uh, determine expression for the general term. So you then say tn is minus two n plus what? Plus three, where's the question? So this one would be the... The, the, the expression for the general term of the first differences. Where's the question? Where's the question? No question. Right, calculate the first difference between the 35th and 36th terms of the quadratic sequence. Calculate the first difference between the 35th and 36th terms of the quadratic sequence. Where's the question? Where was the answer here to 2.2.2? Um, Who knows the answer? Who knows the answer to 2.2.2? Who knows the answer to 2.2.2? Who knows the answer to 2.2.2? Nombuso. What is the answer to 2.2.2 numbers? Where's the answer to 2.2.2 numbers? Um, say. Yes. Okay. I think, say, um, we are going to first calculate for um, 35. Okay. Um, I, I We have our N, which is 35. Yes. Then we will first calculate for our, um, like our N. Okay. I need to say good to N. I'm going to say T and they give us 35. Yeah. It will be T 35 is equal to A, which is 1, plus we calculate for N, then negative 1 times 2. Then we also do go 3, 36. Yeah. Okay, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Yes, I hear you. Okay, so this is okay. This is the trick that the examiners use all the time. Please learn this trick, because now we are dealing with the first differences, which is this first difference. These are the first differences. Now this one is t one. What is term number one here? Is the difference between which term and each term? This one is term number two. Term number two is the difference between which term and which term. So term, um, number, yes, term, yes. term number one is the difference between which term, term and which term. Term two and term three. Yes. So this term two is the difference between term two and term three. So in other words, Term two here 
is the difference between is the this term two is the difference between term three and term two. What is term one? Term one is the difference between term two and term one. Now this one, this minus three is term three. Term three is the difference between what and what? Term three becomes the difference between what? Becomes the difference between term four and term three. So when they say that, calculate the first difference between the first difference here between the 35th and 36th terms. Right, so it is the 35th and 36th terms. So you will say T36 minus T35. That is the difference between 35th and 36th terms. So now if the difference is mean, means that difference means you need to, you need to what? You need to subtract. Difference is the result after subtraction. Are we together? So right now, if it's the difference between 36 and 35th terms is T36 minus T35. But in the, in, in, the, in the case of this, because here if it's T4 minus T3, it is T3. These things are the same, but the four is bigger. T2, the difference between T3 and T2 gives you T2. So this one, T36 minus T35, like T2 minus T1 gives you T1. Are we together? So that no. T36 minus T35 would give you T what? Because these things are always the same. T1, T1, then there's a T2 there. Then the, the, the T3 minus T2 gives you T2. So T35, T36 minus T35 is going to give you T what? 35. It's going to give you T35. Mm. I'll give you T35. Okay, this is the trick the examiners use here. So it means that you just, if they say the, the difference, if they say the difference between term three and term two, it is term two. The difference, the difference between term two and term one is term one. The difference between this one and this one is term two. Is the difference between term three and term two? It is term two. So now, for this one, the difference between T35 and T36 is actually T35 here. So what is T35? Because Tn is this one. Tn is minus, one. Two plus minus two n plus three, which means yes. that you just need to get T35 here. The T35 is the difference between the correct ones. So you then say T35. T35 is minus two times what? 35 plus three. What is minus two times 35? It's minus 70 plus three. What is minus 70 plus three? Minus 67. Okay. Minus 67. And the 67 is the correct answer. So you need to, you don't need to think too hard. Right. Oh, past nine. Okay, good. So now this is actually minus 67. Okay, learn the trick, learn the trick they use in the exam when you are dealing with quadratic sequences, but also now dealing with the first differences, but also dealing with what? With what you call the second what? the second differences all together okay yeah learn the trick remember that this lesson is being recorded for control and quality purposes you will get the recording at the end but we are we are moving on because i want us to do a lot of the questions in this paper and the paper is very long so we know very well that we're not going to finish this whole paper but we want to do the most we can let's move on let's move on Determine an expression for the nth term of the quadratic sequence. What is the expression for the nth term of the quadratic sequence? How do you do that one? 
Okay, because we're dealing with a quadratic sequence here, you write Ooh. minus, um, so you have minus Ooh. three, you have minus six, you have minus 11. Then you would find the first differences like this. What is minus three minus, minus two minus into minus that? You get exactly a one, minus three minus into minus that. You get a minus one, minus six minus into minus that. You get a minus three, minus 11 minus into minus that. You have a minus five and you do this. This minus that is a minus two. This is minus two and this is minus two. So here you have the second differences. You have the second what? Differences. Here, these ones here are the first differences. Right. So these ones here are the first differences. Now, you continue. Determine expression for these. So you remember that 2a is equal to this one. 3a plus b is equal to this one. A plus B plus C is equal to this one. So you come here and then say the 2A is what? Is minus 2. Okay, I would lost numbers so they Okay, if we lose you, please try to connect again because it might just be network issues. You divide by 2 and then you have A is minus 1. The next thing you're going to do is that you have 3A plus B is 1. And then you have uh, this is B is one, which means that the B is equal to what? It's equal to four. Right. When you get that B is equal to four, you need to get C also to be able to find the expression for the nth term of the quadratic sequence. So, which means that you're going to have uh, this one, A plus B plus C is equal to minus three. So A plus B plus C, you are dealing with the quadratic sequences, right? So the A is minus one, the B is a four, plus C equals negative three, and then we have C equals, what is minus one plus four? It's actually a three. A minus three minus three becomes what? A minus six, so that in the end, we have a TN equals AN squared plus BN plus what? Plus C, which means that we have TN equals, what is the A? Um, is minus n squared, the b is actually a 4n, and the c is what? Is a minus 6. So you have to determine an expression for the nth term of the quadratic sequence. That is the expression uh, for the nth term. The expression for the nth term has what? Is exactly right, 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 right. It is exactly what? It is exactly uh, the particular formula here that is the nth term of the quadratic of the quadratic sequence please think about it and think uh, very very carefully and that is what you have there then now we move on to the next question right and moving on to the next question we're gonna do um the next one you're gonna do the next one show that the sequence of numbers will never contain a positive term show that the sequence of numbers will never contain a what will never contain a positive a positive term right so now to do that you're going to do 2.2.4 which means that what we have here is tn we got the general formula the nth term, which is minus n squared plus 4n minus 6. The tn is minus n squared plus 4n minus 6. That is the nth term of the quadratic pattern. Right. So we have here the minus n squared plus 4n minus 6. Okay. So now to be able to find the general expression, you need to factor out the negative. And then you have n squared minus 4n plus 6. minus so that in the end you have n squared minus 4n then you need to complete the square here uh, you, you do that in grade 11 so you have the minus 4 you divide by 2 you take the coefficient of the of the n um we spent a bit more time uh, uh some time back on completing the square with parallelo uh right in the grade 11 learners so that now at this point, uh, you have uh, n squared minus 4n, and then you have plus, uh, you have minus 2, you square this, 
and then uh, you have minus two, you square that, and then we have plus six like that. Okay, and then now at this point, uh, you have Tn, which is minus. Okay, at this point, uh, then you have N minus two, right? So you have this negative two, then this one, this trinomial here, you can just factor it by writing the N and the minus two, and you put a, a square on top, minus, you square the minus two, you get exactly a four plus six. Right, and then we have the, the Tn equals, and then you have n minus two, you square this, so then you have six minus four, you get a two. You distribute, and then this becomes exactly n minus two, you square this, which becomes minus two. But obviously, see, by looking at these in the 2.4, the Tn, which is n minus two squared minus two, so that then in the end, you'd realize therefore that it showed that the sequence of numbers will never contain a positive, a positive term, right? You would therefore realize that there is a T max term, right? So T, T n max. So that the Tn max is going to occur when at n equals 2. At n equals 2, this one is going to be 0, so that we have minus 2. So that we have minus 2. So that the Tn max, therefore, is exactly what? It's exactly minus 2. And the, the maximum term is minus 2. That is the biggest one, which is going to occur when n is 2. And as a consequence here, you say then, therefore, no positive, no positive terms, no positive terms, because the maximum, the biggest one is the negative two, meaning the others are going to even be much more smaller. So as a consequence, therefore, this particular sequence will never contain a positive term. Where's the question? Where's the question? Okay, try to think about these things. You watch the video during your own leisure. Make sure you can make sense of these uh, uh, calculations and make sure you understand these things. We're trying to train you to deal with the September assessments. These September assessments are very serious. So you need to be able to think big. You need to be able to analyze the questions. If, if ever the network is breaking, please, you will have a chance. This lesson is, is, is recorded for control and quality purposes. So you'll have a perfect chance to, uh, to understand the things as you move along. We move on. Okay, now let's look at 3.1. Let's look at 3.1. Given that Sn is 4n squared plus 1, determine T6. Determine T6. Okay, T6 will be, is the sixth term. So, parallelo and nombuso. Right, we're given Sn equals 4n squared plus 1. Determine T6. They're saying if Sn is that one, then T6 is equal to what? What do we do here? So if Sn is 4n squared plus 1, then what is term number 6? What is term number 6? What is term number 6? Sir, can I try? Yes, please. Um, 1 to the 5. How do you know? How did you do it? I am... Um... I substituted six and n. Okay, you substituted six and then you got s six, which is four, and then you have six squared plus one, and then uh, it is four yes. times. And then you can use a calculator to save time here. Six squared, six squared is thirty six times four plus one. So we're gonna have here. Okay. We're gonna have four times six squared plus one. What's the answer? It's 145, okay? Yeah, okay, you got 145, that's fine. 
So for instance, uh, you have here exactly 145. Then you also have uh, now S5. You must also do S5. I'll tell you why. And then you have five squared plus one. What is S5? Now five squared is what? It's 25. 25 times four is what? It's 100. Plus one is what? Is one. one. Good. Thank you so much for being in a position to do that. So now, if you want to find term number six, because they're saying determine term number six, this is the sum. So this one says the sum of uh, six terms. The sum of six terms, the sum of the first six terms is 145. The sum of the first five terms is 101. So T6, therefore, is the sum of six terms. From the six terms, you minus the sum of the five terms. So if from six terms you remove five terms, then you are left with term number six. Right. So as a consequence, then you have term number one, you have term number two, you have term number three, you have term number four, you have term number five, and then you have term number six. Okay, you have uh, those particular terms there. And we are then saying, out of these te six terms, these are six terms, you, mi you minus five terms. You minus the first five, you minus this, you minus this, you minus this. If you minus this, then you are left with what? You are left with term number six. So that then term number six is just all the six terms and then you minus only the first five. So now you have the, the sum of the first six terms, which is 145. And then the sum of the first five terms is 101. Out of the six terms, you remove five, you're left with term number six. So that 145 minus 101, what you get is the answer. You get exactly what? A 44. You get exactly a 44. So that T6 uh, is equal to a 44. Who has a question? Because it was like three marks in last year's paper. Three marks. So to get T6, then you must say S6 minus S5. So we continue. We continue. For which values of X will the following series converge? Okay, so how do you do, how do you do convergence? This 3.2, for which values of x will the following series converge? If they give you 4x minus 3 plus 4x minus 3 squared plus 4x minus 3 cubed, for which values of x will the series converge? How do you do this question? Okay, convergence, you must do what? To do convergence, you must find the, the, the constant ratio. So how do you find uh, the constant ratio? How do you find the constant ratio? How do you find the constant ratio? How? Okay, to find the constant ratio, which you call R, the constant ratio is always term 2 divided by term what? Term 2 divided by term 1. That is the constant ratio. Term 2 divided by term 1. So that term 2 is what? Term two is 4x minus three, which you square divided by term one. Term one is 4x minus three. And then if you divide this, you get 4x minus three. So that for which values of x will the following series converge? Right, it will converge whatever the, for convergence. Right, for convergence. What do we know for convergence? For convergence minus one must be less than R less than one. So that now we have minus one is less than. The common ratio would be 4x minus three is less than one. Right, so you need to solve for x here. To solve for x here, now you need to add three here. Less than 4x minus three, you add three here. And this one is plus three there. So my minus one plus three, you get two, which is 4x less than one plus three is what? It's a four. And then you want to solve for X. So to solve for X right now, you want to remove this four. And to remove this four, you must multiply by one quarter. One quarter times two is less than, you have one quarter times uh, four X, and then is less than, and then you have one quarter times four, which means that now you have two over four, which is one half less than X less than one. And therefore this is the answer. 
this is the answer. So that one half is less than x less than one. One half is less than x less than one. But you must indicate that because in the end, then you must also make sure that the 4x minus 3 is not equal to 0, which means that x is not equal to 3 out of 4. So that x indeed lies between 1 half and 1, but we're effectively then saying that x is not equal to 3 out of 4, because 3 out of 4 is 0, 0,75, and 0, 0,75 is actually surely between the... 0, 0,5 and 1. 0, 0,5 and what? And 1. 0, 0,5 and 1. You get the point. So, for which values of x will the following series converge? This is the answer. You must first get what you call the constant ratio, and then we're using t2 over t1. But also the constant ratio is not only T2 over T1, but it's also T3 over T2, right? But also it's going to be the same thing because if you do T3, T3 is 4X minus 3, you cube it. And then T2 is 4X minus 3, and then you square it. If you divide these things, you have 4X minus 3. And this is the what? This is the constant ratio. And the constant ratio is minus 1 between minus 1 and 1. Then um, if you have uh, the 4x minus 3 is between these two, then you get, you're able to get that x is between 1 half and 1. Please ask if you have a question. Any question about the values of x for which the series is going to converge. They're going to ask you this question, please, in the exam. It's already there. It's already there, Nombuso. This question is already there on Friday. It's already there in the exam. Parallelo, this question is already there in your September test. It's already there. This one is already there. As it is, it is there already. They're going to ask you for which values of X will the following series converge. They're going to ask you. Okay, we move on. Now let us look at 3.3. .3. Calculate this sum here. Calculate this sum here. So how do you calculate this sum? To calculate this sum, we are dealing with the summation, right? From k equals three to k equals five, and we're dealing with the, we're dealing with the summation, right? From k equals three to k equals five, then you have minus one to the power k, and then you have two out of k, and then you're gonna substitute everything here. You're gonna substitute everything. So if you put k equals three then you're going to have minus 1 to the power 3 and then 2 out of 3. And then plus minus 1 to the power 4, 2 out of 4. Plus minus 1 to the power 5, then 2 out of 5. All right, so we have minus 1 cubed, which is minus 2 out of 3. Then minus 1 to the fourth power, which is exactly 1. So we have two out of four there. But if you raise minus one to an odd number, it's going to be minus. So it's minus two out of five. And then you add everything here. If you add everything here, you take the LCD. What is the LCD here? Right. What is then the LCD of this? It's 30. So 30 divided by three is it's exactly a 10. You multiply here, you get minus 20. You divide 30 by four, right? Or you you can use a 60, just use a 60. Right, so if you use the LCD, LCM 60, you divide 60 by three, you get a 20 times two is a minus 40. Divide this one by four, you get a 15 times two, you get a 30. Right, you divide 60 by five. Right, so if you have 60, you divide it by five, is the same as six by 10 out of five. You divide this, get, getting a two, which gives you 12, right? Times two, which gives you minus 24, okay? And therefore now at this point, uh, you have exactly a 30 and the minus, minus 64, 
Right, so what is 30 minus 64 is actually minus 34. You divide by 60 and you divide this one by two and it becomes exactly minus 17 out of 30. So obviously you need to calculate this sum here and this sum here is minus 17 out of 30. How did you do that? We evaluate this from k uh, equals three to k equals five. And then now wherever there is k, you put three. You put three, three, and then next, the three, um, this K runs from three, two to five, right? So from, you put three, three, then you put four, four, then you stop at five, five, and then you add all the numbers. Where's the question about this summation problem? Where's the question? And this summation is said to be in what? It's said to be in sigma, sigma notation. It is in sigma notation. Where's the question on this one? 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 Let's move to the next question. Let's move to the next question because I want us to do as many questions as possible. We're not gonna finish the paper because time is running. But now let's look at question four that I said last year for the kids. Consider the graphs g of x equals 6 over x plus 3 minus 3 over 2. The edge of x is 6 over x minus 3 plus 2. Write down the domain of g. Who knows the domain of g? One mark. What is the domain of g? What is the domain of g? What is the domain of g? How do you find the domain? What do you look for in the domain? Okay, to find the domain, you just look for the denominator. You look for the denominator if this one, and then you just say x plus 3 is not 0. So the domain means that the denominator cannot be equal to 0, and that means that x, and that means that x is not equal to what? Is not equal to minus 3. That means that x is not equal to? Minus three. Then now you're gonna do four point two. Write down the range of h. Write down the range of h. Who knows the range of h? Nombuso, what is the range of h? Nombuso, what is the what is the range of h? Okay, h is this one. Yeah, h is six over x minus three plus two. What is the range of h? I've just copied this h here. What is its range? What is the range of h? Um, it's x is equal to three. Okay, so the range is to do with the last number. Right, so the range would be y not equal to two. y be a real number. So here for the rate for the domain you say x is not equal to minus three. So for the domain you say x is not equal to minus three yet yet x is what is an element of the set of real numbers. So x is an element of the set of real numbers x is not equal to minus three. If the graph of g is shifted so that it coincides with the graph of h. So the graph of g is shifted so that it coincides with the graph of h. How many units must the graph be shifted horizontally? Okay, so they've given you two graphs. The graph of G is 6 over X plus 3 minus 3 over 2. The graph of H is what? Is 6 over X minus 3 plus 2. If the graph of G is shifted so that it coincides with the graph of H, how many units must the graph be shifted horizontally? So we are saying that the graph of G is shifted horizontally so that it uh, coincides with the graph of H. How many units must it be shifted horizontally? Who knows? Pechalelo. Pechalelo. Are you able to see the question? We're saying this graph of G is shifted to right coincide with the graph of H. How many units must the graph be shifted horizontally? What's up? How many units must the graph be shifted horizontally?
How many units must the graph be shifted horizontally? So is it um one comma five units to how the do you know? How do you front? know? How do you know? <laughs> so I look at the equation. You look at the equation. Okay, because now to, the horizontal shift is gonna affect the horizontal shift yeah. affects the x-axis and then the vertical shift affects the y-axis because the y-axis is vertical. So if you shift horizontally, so the x plus three must be the same as what? Must be the same as x minus three. X plus three must be the same as what? X minus three. X plus three must be the same as what? X minus three. You get the point? Yes. So the question is, what number can you add now? We want to make x plus 3 to be the same as x minus 3. What number do we add here so that it looks like this? So that x plus 3 is x minus 3. What number do we add to plus 3 so that plus 3 becomes minus 3? What number do we add there? This will be... A, a shift horizontally. This should be a horizontal shift. So, so we should add. Yes, or subtract. Add or subtract. If we're adding, we have to add um negative six. We need to add negative to... six. That's correct. We need to add negative six plus three. So that uh, minus six plus three, you get minus three. And this is the horizontal shift. So it means that the horizontal shift must be six units. Six units. But you see, if you subtract three, it means that it is six units right. Six units to the right. Okay, right. So if it is six units to the what? Six units to the right, you can write like that. Uh, it is six units to... To the right okay so that now the x plus three is going to be like x minus three six units to the right that's a horizontal shift that is going to affect change the x to make the x plus three like x minus six then how many units must the graph be shifted vertically okay so now if this graph is shifted vertically it means that we have uh, minus three over two Minus three over two must be must be made the same as what? Must be made the same as two. So what must be added there? Minus three over two must be this made the same as minus two. What do we add to minus three over two to get two? Who knows? Who knows? Parallelo, there's a number we can add here. There's a number you can add or subtract. There's a number you can add or subtract to this so that we get two. What number do we add here to get two? Anyone? Who knows? Who knows? What number do we, can you add to minus three over two? You see, minus three over two is the same as what? Minus three over two is minus 1.5. Minus three over two is minus 1.5 because this gives two like that. Minus three over two is minus, is the same as minus 1.5. So what number do we add to minus 1.5 to get two? There's a number we need to add or a number we need to subtract. What number? Nombuso. What number? What is the number? Uh, sir? What number? Do we add? Yes, Pekhalelo. What number do we add? Because this is, they're saying, how many units must be graphed be shifted vertically? For the, for the vertical shift, you just look at this number here. And then so you can add? Yes, what can you add? 
We can add 3.5. to You can add 3.5. Well done. We can add exactly 3.5 because I'm just testing you with these things, guys. So you can add 3.5 because if you say 3.5, 3.5 minus 1.5 is 2. So this means that this one here, you can say it is 3.5 units. Because by how many units? It is 3.5 that can be added. So it's 3.5. But this 3.5, it's, 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 it's a plus. It's positive that you're adding. It's a positive number that you're adding. So it is uh, 3.5 units upwards. Because if you, if you add the graph, the graph goes up. The graph goes up. You see, I'm just testing you with these things because I just need to make sure that you can just use your, your heads a little bit. Right. Okay, we move on. Next question. Next question. Okay, write down the equations of the asymptotes of G. Okay, if we say that G of X is 6 over X plus 3, Minus 3 over 2. What are the asymptotes of this G? Nombuso. What are the asymptotes of this G? Nombuso. Yeah, so can I try? Oh, okay, it's fine. Okay, anyone? Okay. Yeah? What are the asymptotes of that graph there? Nombuso. Okay, so um, I was going to say um, it will be three. No. It will be two. three. Three over two. two. It it will be three over two, huh? Like mm -hmm. the minus three over two is y, and then the x plus three to get the asymptote for the x plus three, you must say x plus three is zero. So that x is minus 3. Or y is minus y is minus 3 over 2. Okay. Okay. So now what are the asymptotes? The asymptotes, this one is called the vertical. It's called the vertical asymptote. And this one is called the horizontal. It's called the horizontal asymptote. It's called what? The horizontal asymptote. Right. If you look at 4.5, calculate the x-intercept of G. What is the... How do you find the x-intercept of G? What do we do? Because G of x... Let Yes, what do we do? Anyone? Sir. Okay, you're we are looking for the x for the y for the y intercept. Yes. Let y equals to zero. So we need to let y be equal to zero. Because we need to get yes. the x intercept, you let the other variable be zero. To get the x intercept, you let y be equal to zero. When y equal to zero, it means that where wherever there is g, you're gonna put zero like this. Minus three over two. And then it is 3 over 2, which equals 6 over x plus what? x plus 3. You cross multiply this so that you have 3 by x, which is exactly 3x plus 9, which equals 2 by 6. 2 by 6 is what? It's 12. And this is 3x equal to exactly 9 minus 12, uh, 12 minus 9. 12 minus 9 is what? It's 3. So that we have 3x equals 3. We divide by 3, you divide by 3. So that x is equal to what? X is equal to nine. X is equal to nine. Okay, so this is the x-intercept. How do you write the x-intercept? So the x-intercept is, we have already got that x is equal to one. Right, so if x is equal to one, then uh, it means that you can just write here, x is equal to one and then y is equal to zero. Y equals zero. And that is the x-intercept of G is one and zero. Is one and zero. Where's the question? Where's the question? So we found the x-intercept of G. We move on. Next question. 
Next question. Okay, consider the graphs of that. Sketch the graph of G in your answer book. Show clearly all the intercepts there. Right, so to sketch the graph, it's very straightforward. We're going to sketch it very quickly. This is the x-axis and that is the y-axis. But we've seen that now this, the graph of G has a vertical asymptote through um, minus 3. And the equation is x equals minus 3. And then we have already found the, the x-intercept of the graph. And then the x-intercept of the graph, it's going to become what? It's going to be 1 and it's going to be exactly 1 and 0. So that's going to be exactly the x-intercept of the graph. But we've seen that the y-intercept of the graph, the y, the, the horizontal asymptote, is y equals to this one. So, which means that this is the graph. So it's going to have its, its, uh, its y-intercept. So the, for the g, the y-intercept, right, the y-intercept is, is obtainable whenever x is 0, which means that you have g of 0, which is 6 over 0 plus 3, minus three over two, which means that G of zero is six divided by three, which is two minus three over two, and uh, three, uh, two minus three over two, three over two is one and a half. From two, you remove one and a half, you get a half. So it means that this one is gonna be, whenever X is zero, Y is one and a half. It's gonna give us exactly the, um, the Y um, intercept. Now, G of X is six over, x plus 3 minus 3 over 2, and therefore it means that you're going to have uh, exactly this one here. You're going to have exactly this. So that in the end, then if this graph is like this, if this graph is like this, you would have uh, exactly this graph you'd have exactly this graph. One piece is going to be there and the other one is going to be this way. Right, show clearly all intercepts and intercepts. Yeah, show clearly all asymptotes, the asymptotes we have shown. And then also this is the horizontal asymptote. That is the vertical asymptote. The y-intercept is shown zero and one half. The x-intercept has been shown is one and zero. And we have the pieces of the rectangular hyperbola appearing in the Cartesian plane. Where's the question? Where's the question? Right, we move on. Next question. Next question. Right, so in the next question right now, we're going to be looking at 4.7. Determine the value of k if h of x is minus x plus k. Right, determine the value of k if h of x is minus x plus k is an axis of symmetry of g. Determine the value of k if h of x is equal to minus x plus k is the axis of symmetry of g. So how do you know about the axis of symmetry of g? So the axis of symmetry of g is going to be, the axis of symmetry is going to be such that uh, it's going to be, the axis of symmetry is going to pass through, and axis of symmetry passes through the intersection of the two asymptotes, right? The horizontal asymptote and also the vertical asymptote. Right, so that at this point, you have the intersection minus 3, minus 3 over 2. Y is minus 3 over 2, minus X. And then X is minus 3 plus K, which is 3 plus K. What is K? K is going to be minus 3 over 2, minus 3, which means that K is minus three over two minus uh, three, which is uh, minus three minus six, which is minus nine out of two. So obviously here we need to determine the value of K if that is the case, but we've already seen therefore that K is actually equal to what? K is actually equal to minus nine out of two. Right, so this uh, allows us to determine the value of K uh, um, if that one is an axis of symmetry of the, of the graph. 
right? And therefore, K is minus tan of 2. Okay, you know that they, there are two lines of symmetry of the of the rectangular parabola. It is either the one which is minus x plus k or you do x plus k. I can see the time. Okay, for which values of x will this one, for which values of x will the 6 over x plus 3 minus 3 over 2 be greater than uh, minus x plus k? Right, so obviously at this point, you need to have the rough idea of the graph. So that you have this. And then you have this. Right, and then you have this. Minus 3 out of 2. Y and then this is X. Right, so we have seen that one of the pieces of the graph is going to be like this, and the other one is going to be this way. So that then in the end, what we're getting here, for which values of x will this one be the case? So for which values of x will the rectangular parabola for g, this is the graph of g. So for which values of x will the rectangular parabola for g? So we're saying g of x here is bigger than minus x plus k. Right, so if g of x is bigger than minus x plus k, it actually means that this uh, particular graph here, the g is going to be bigger than the, it's a, so g is above the line of symmetry. So the line of symmetry with the negative slope will actually be the line of symmetry that runs straight down like this. So here, effectively, we're saying that g is above this line of symmetry. So for which of x of x will that be the case? So now you need to look and think and reason very, very carefully. So at what point we have that the g is above? Right, and you're able to see, therefore, that whatever, because this is minus 3. This is minus 3. So you'd actually be in a position to realize that at this point, it will be when x is bigger. It will be when x is bigger than minus 3. Right, so whenever x is bigger than minus 3, you'd realize that, indeed, this graph will be most certainly. So in other words, when you progress in this direction, you'd actually be rest assured that this G is above. Otherwise here, obviously, what then we are seeing is a potential point of, okay, there's something else I want to say here. So because if you look at the six over X plus three minus three over two, and we're saying it is actually above the minus x plus k. So we're saying g is above that. So I want us to look at the fact that g here, for instance, g here is below. g here is below. And we want g to be above. So g is surely above when x is bigger than minus 3. Because if you progress in this direction, g is above and uh, here g is below. Think about it. Okay, now the graph of G is reflected in the x-axis. The graph of G is reflected in the x-axis. Now in 4.9, the graph of G is reflected in the x-axis. Okay, you reflect it in the x-axis. This is the x-axis, you reflect the graph of G. Write down the new equation in the form Y equals something. So this is bigger than minus three. The graph of G is reflected in the x-axis, yeah? Write down the new equation in the form that. So if you reflect, so now there's something we call a reflection. Reflection in the x-axis. Okay, look. A reflection in the x-axis, this is the sort of graph. Okay, a reflection in the x-axis would mean a point here would be would have its image there. That's how you reflect in the x-axis. So a point x, y would be that y is negative. If you reflect in the x-axis, y is positive here, and then y becomes negative below. So if you reflect a point x, y in the x-axis, reflection in the x-axis is going to make y negative. Going to make y negative. Okay, so now you're going to 
now the graph of g is reflected this is the graph of g right which means that at this point uh, you're going to consider g of x which is 6 over x plus 3 minus 3 out of 2 so if yeah so at this point uh, then y is going to be negative so if y is negative then you're going to have negative y which is 6 over x plus 3. But x remains the same if you reflect in the x-axis, then y becomes negative. Because y is positive here, then y is negative below. You divide, which means it is minus uh, that over x plus 3, and then plus 3 over 2. Okay, so now, write down the new equation. This is the new equation. That is exactly the equation. Okay, if you reflect in the what? You reflect in the x-axis, it means that uh, y becomes negative. Y becomes negative, so think about it. I'm going to make this video available immediately after we're done with our discussion so that you can watch the video and practice with these questions and repeat, 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 repeat. You watch this video, you play back, you play back, you play back. This video is going to be there for the longest of times. It's going to be there for a very, very long time. Right, now, the time is exactly after 10, 21 past 10. I think that you need to stop because your minds are tired now. Your minds are tired because, uh, you see, we have a lot of questions and there are some other graphs there. But I think that it's a good time for us to, to actually stop. I must thank you guys for joining us. It was awesome having our discussion. We shall be right back tomorrow at the same time, 8 p.m. And we shall be doing more questions. Right. Thank you for joining us. The best is we start early and we can run through many, many questions if possible. But again, I mean, in the end, it's very important to understand. So it's not a question of just having a marathon, you know, running through the questions, but also the understanding is very important. Right. I must thank you guys for joining for joining us. It was awesome having this, this discussion. Until tomorrow, take care. And I'm going to make this recording available tonight to you. I'm going to send it to you. But thank you, guys. Take care and goodbye. Goodbye, Pekhalelo. Bye, sir. Goodbye. <laughs>